Hi, my name is Rebecca. I'm a graduate of Ghana Christian International High School. I urge you all to subscribe to His Gov TV. Thank you. Hello there, you are welcome to His Gov TV. My name is Collins Nanaya Abebrese. So, uh, in this uh, series of videos, I'm taking you through the Chief Examiner's uh, report from uh, Wayek, and that's the Wasi. And so uh, today we are looking at history, uh, paper two, and uh, the Chief Examiner's report actually uh, details the mistakes uh, that students make in the writing of their uh, Wasi paper. And so uh, this uh, video is uh, recommended to uh, teachers, students, and of course candidates who are also uh, preparing to write their WASI exams. And so do not forget to uh, subscribe to this uh, channel for more of these educative uh, contents. So let's uh, begin with uh, history. Now this, uh, this year's uh, report is uh, 2021 uh, history report. So if you have the history question for uh, 2021, you will be able to see uh, the performance of students and also uh, the mistakes uh, that students made so that you also uh, do not repeat that same uh, mistakes. So knowing the mistakes and being conscious of it is what we are here to do today. So I recommend you share this to your teachers and students and candidates as well. So let's begin with our uh, course, report. So we have history, as I said, this is paper two. So let's look at the general comments made by the examiners. The questions set this year were within the scope of the syllabus, unambiguous and within the reach of the candidates in terms of level of thinking. So yeah, the, the question set for 2021 was within the scope of the syllabus they were unambiguous and students should be able to answer it performance of candidates was a marked improvement on the previous year as they performed well on all the pre uh, critical grade points so the general comment students did quite well uh, in in the 2021 hour uh, let's take a look at the summary of candidate strength now the candidate strength uh, has to do with the the strength of the candidate so what the candidate did right okay and so they are encouraged to also of course continue as well as you a candidate you are also encouraged to continue doing that in case you are doing same so one was coherent answers an encouraging number of candidates wisely did some planning before writing their answers such planned answers uh, followed, uh, followed in logical and coherent order. A teacher should encourage this practice for it makes the reading assessment and award of math clear and fair. But candidates should cross out such plan or rough work before they do not intend them to be part of their final exam. So this is to all candidates. Sometimes when you are about to uh, write an essay, you decide to write the points down, all right? The points that you may use in the writing of your exit, you list them uh, behind the sheet or your answer sheet. And this, the examiners are, uh, are encouraging uh, candidates to uh, continue to do so. But then, after using it to answer your questions, please and please again, cross them out. Don't leave them untouched cross them out because they are not part of the work when you leave them there it assumes that it is part of the work so after you have you uh, you have finished uh, using the points you cross them out and when you do that it helps you to you know uh, write coherent answers and also you you tend to have a plan work okay now let's take a look at the next one relevance and applic an appreciable number of candidates did marvelously well by presenting their points with cogent and logical examples, especially for uh, questions one, four, eight, and nine, and obtain high marks. So we shall take a look at the uh, question one, four, eight, and nine. But then the examiners are saying that students did quite well in these areas, all right? 
God. So let's look at the summary of candidates' weaknesses. What candidates didn't do right. And so you should also not repeat the same mistakes. Leaving blank lines. Still, some and quite an unappreciable number of candidates leave blank lines or spaces in presentation of their points instead of presenting each point in a paragraph. Now, history students are encouraged okay, to write their essay in paragraphs. You do not have to leave a space between points. So, for instance, you write point one, okay, say list four types of that, and then you first you write the first point. Most students uh, tend to leave a space between the first point and the second point, and then they start the second point on the, on the next line. You know, leaving a line in between. These examiners are saying it is not good. You may lose marks when you do that. So, your your questions, uh, your answers must be in coherent, uh, sorry, it must be in paragraph. So don't leave a line. You know how to, uh, you know, write in paragraphs. If you don't know how to write in paragraphs, go back to your English book and go and find out. Write in paragraphs. Don't leave lines. And I always recommend that students don't even number them. Just write them in paragraphs and let your paragraph stand out. All points in one paragraph. This was also another uh, weakness of students. Some also presented the points in one paragraph. And that's making marking difficult since an examiner has to strain before awarding marks. Yes, students, some of them also, when they try to write it in paragraph, the mistakes they make is they uh, put all the you know, uh, points in one paragraph. I don't know if it's because they don't know how to write in paragraphs or it's because they don't understand the meaning of paragraph. When we are saying you should write in paragraph, like I said, if you don't know how to write in paragraphs, go back and search for it in your English books. Writing in paragraphs does not mean that you should cramp or put together all your four points or five points in one line. The reason here is that students don't leave any paragraph. They don't leave any line in between the points. They don't leave any paragraphs. They just write raw and this is what Examiners are saying, please and please again, go and learn your uh, usage of paragraphs. Now, tenses. Surprisingly, quite a number of candidates are uh, presented their answers in present tense instead of past tense. That's losing marks. This is also uh, one of the things I always tell my students. History is in the past. Your verbs must all be in the past tense. Under no circumstance should you write or present your essay in history in a present form or using a present tense so you don't write is you don't use are okay these verbs must be in the past okay was okay where you know came okay not come you know so some of these i hope you know past tense please do that and you will not lose marks the section A of history syllabus continue to remain a challenge to many history students. This is reflected in the weak manner candidates responded to questions posed in that section of the paper, especially in question 1, 2, and 3. Now, the section A part has to do with the, uh, the landmarks of African history. So, from the, uh, uh, from the definition of history to the methods uh, used in the reconstruction of African history, um, through to the civilizations, that is where students, according to examiners, also have a lot of uh, challenges. So please master that area very well before you go and write your exams. These are the suggested uh, remedies, things that uh, teachers and students and candidates can do in order to, uh, you know, do away with some of these mistakes. So one, in future, candidates should be taught about tenses to be used in presenting their points since most of the events from which questions set took place in the past. So tenses, students should work on that. Now again, uh, candidates can overcome the use of wrong words by cultivating the habit of reading magazines and storybooks and relevant literature. They should get good dictionaries. Yeah. Most students tend to read history uh, notes without checking out meanings of words and all of that. Please and please again. Misusing of words may also go against you. 
okay uh, now to get good uh, dictionaries to aid them to get the meaning and correct a usage of words they may also keep an inventory of such words and refer to them often in doubt please don't just use any word anyhow three a careful and orderly arrangement of answers enhances accurate assessment uh, candidates should uh, therefore be advised to fully complete the answer to one question before they tackle the next where the where it becomes necessary to continue an answer to a question elsewhere the examiner should be directed for candidates are advised not to reserve pages or spaces for questions they are not ready to answer immediately don't leave spaces and say that I'm going to answer the next question so when I come back I'll come and continue it is not advisable sometimes in that you may forget that you have left a space or by the time you come back the response that you give the answer that you write may be more than the space that you left and so you you find yourself in a difficult situation whereby you are forced to jump and go and you know continue the next whatever in the next paper and well you know it's it's all kind of it brings a lot of uh, discomfort to the examiners and it, it makes marking very very quite difficult teachers should come up with a teaching method that will make the teaching and learning of this subject interesting and meaningful to the candidates yeah so uh, these ones i recommend the use of videos and pictures and you know group presentations and all of that it shouldn't only be about the teacher but then that's for the teacher so let's take a look at the detailed comment and this uh, detailed comment has to do with uh, the individual questions and how students fit in all these uh, questions in answering them let's take a look at the question number one this question on Egypt was popular many of the candidates who attempted delivered well however a handful of the candidates deviated from the task by writing everything on the civilization of Egypt instead of outlining any five features of the religious system of Egypt so the question was outline five features of the religious systems in Egypt and a lot of students were writing the whole uh, civilization of Egypt from the construction of the pyramid you know to architecture to the handwriting you know everything about them the, the socio-economic uh, political organizations all these were written by students and stick to what they have asked you to do just the religious uh, system and you should be able to do that now this question was specific in its demands and it did expect candidates to write on the achievement of the pharaohs and their contributions to world uh, civilization it must be stressed that a lot more of the candidates address the question aptly and scored higher marks the overall performance of candidate was good yeah because this was a popular question now let me also state here popular question there are some questions which are unpopular I call them questions for the fools all right they are unpopular questions you don't have to touch them a question that you read and nothing comes to mind please move on to the next question when you read and you don't get more than three points in your mind don't try it it's a question for the fool so we call them unpopular question we may come across some of them let's take a look at question number two this question on the babies was not popular so we have come across a non-popular question this was evidence in the kind of weak response given by the candidates in addressing the question. Most of the candidates could not list the group of people Bebe came into contact with in part A of the question. Neither could they aptly uh, tackle the question on the impact of Roman conquest on the Bebe civilization. The conclusion drawn from the, performer, from the poor performance of candidates on these questions is that candidates do not, have, do, not do sufficient reading of the topics in the session a part of the history syllabus yeah so this question was uh, talking about the uh, roman impact on the baby uh, so the baby conquered the roman so uh, sorry the the romans conquered the baby so what was the impact of the romans on the baby civilization a lot of students could not be able to do it and the examiners are saying that this was a uh, unpopular question i don't know if it is unpopular to you or not popular and also the people that the uh, babies came into contact with a lot of students could not also do that Th let's take another question number three several candidates avoided this question on axiom uh, for candidates were to identify the social effect of the introduction of christianity on the people of axiom those who attempted it 
I dwelled more on the introduction of Christianity and partially explained the social effect. However, a few of the candidates performed excellently on this question. They, they ably expanded points such as Christianity became recognized as a state uh, religion. Christianity brought about peace in action. Literature f uh, flourished. Aside the good performance put up by few uh, candidates regarding this question, the overall performance of candidates was poor. So this question was talking about the introduction of uh, Christianity to action. And we know before you, you even come to that topic, we have how uh, Christianity got introduced to Axum. And so you realize that a lot of students were spending much time on the um, uh, the Fermentials introduction of Christianity, the shipwreck and all of that. And these examiners are saying, you don't have to do that. Go straight to the question. Please attack the question. I always tell my students, I use the term, attack the question. Go straight to the question. Don't be beating about the bush. Just go. It says effect of uh, Christianity on Axum. One effect of Christianity on Axum was that it led to blah, blah, blah. Go straight to the question. Don't go about the bush, you know. Then we have question number four. This question was very popular and those who attempted to perform credibly with high scores, they ably identified and explained the ways the possession of iron improved the life of the people by way of employment, income, item of trade, a currency, farming to war implement, household items, and items for decoration, among many others. The overall performance of candidates was very good. So this has to do with the traditional uh, um, industries. And I'm sure that uh, candidates were asked to uh, talk or to write about the benefit of the iron industry to uh, the people of pre colonial Ghana. And they did well. Let's take a look at five. Many candidates attempted this question. The part A was uh, the part A was rightly uh, the part A was rightly handled. The European countries involved in the scramble for and partition of Africa were correctly collected. France, Portugal, blah blah blah. However, the B part was poorly handled. The effect of the scramble for end partition of Africa were wrongly taken to be the effect of colonization. Candidates should have explained how partition led to boundary disputes, loss of independence of traditional state, European interference in local affairs, division of ethnic groups and families, as well as exploitation of natural resources. The overall performance candidate was average. So yeah. This question had to do with the effect of the partition of uh, West Africa and quite a lot of them were writing about the effect of uh, colonization. Somehow it is somehow tricky because some of the effect of colonization somehow can be used for effect of the partition of Africa the same way the effect of, I mean, and vice versa. And so somehow students kind of mix them, but hey, you should be careful. These are the effect, loss of boundaries, disputes, uh, loss of independence, the traditional state, European interference of local politics and all of that. I have a video uh, discussing all these uh, lessons on the platform. You can check that for yourself. Now let's take a look at uh, question number six. Majority of the candidates avoided this question. Uh, those who attempted it were unable to impress with their answers. The part A was done with errors in spellings. Some uh, candidates uh, simply wrote Asin and did not specify whether Asin Apemenim or Asin Attendant. So, regarding the part B, some candidates uh, listed the points without expanding on it. They were able to identify trade uh, rivalry, acquisition of guns and gun uh, powder, uh, protection of uh, wrongdoers by Europeans, and personal desires of some leaders to expand uh, their states and our uh, kingdoms the overall performance of candidate of sport and i presume this question was about the uh, the the effect identify they were able to identify identify trade rivalry acquisition of guns and gunpowder protection of wrong by European. i think it was talking about the the political effect of the europeans uh, presence along the coast i presume that was the question and a lot of them could not explain. Sometimes students are not able to explain. You know, they just provide the points to you. I mean, for you. Let's do a question number seven. Few candidates attempted this question. They did not give many reasons that promoted nationalism in Ghana. They dwelt on unemployment, shortage of goods, and high price. Of course, problems of ex servicemen and the February 19th, this pack day, 1948 route. Candidate fell short 
of mentioning the discrimination against Africans in the political and economic structure of the country, the role of the press, formation of political parties, and lack of infrastructure. However, the real performance of the was good. So yeah, this uh, question, I think that um, um, candidates, because I think um, students were asked to talk about some of the factors that promoted nationalism in Ghana. And when you look at this question uh, correctly, when you look at the history books, some of the factors, even though some of them have been mentioned here, the ones somehow in your book uh, has to talk about some of these things, the ex-servicemen and co, which has to do with after the second uh, world war. Uh, yeah, the grievances of Ghanaians after the second world war or factors that brought about increased nationalism. I think this is a pure government uh, question. But then, of course, candidates are supposed to stick to uh, the role of the press, the, the, the formation of political parties, uh, and also the discrimination of Africans, which were also all part of the grievances of Ghanaians. Let's look at the question number eight. This question was highly popular. Wow. Many of the candidates who attempted did extremely well. The candidates did well by highlighting on the major achievements of a champions uh, regime. Mention was made of the regime flagship programs such as the Feed Yourself and Industry, a Rise Revolutionary Revolution, irrigation of the Accra Plains, Pond, Hydroelectric Dam. The overall performance of the candidate was good. So yeah, a champions achievement was asked and I think that uh, candidates did quite well, you know, on that. Let's look at the last one. This uh, question was very popular. The part A or A part was excellently done. However, some few uh, candidates got the spelling of the names of the leaders of the UGCC wrong. The B part was unanswered well. Reasons for the introduction of indirect rule well were explained excellently. And the B part was answered well. Reasons for the introduction of indirect rule were, expl were explained excellently by the candidates. Example were insufficient British officers, inadequate funds, a language barrier affecting uh, communication, inadequate uh, knowledge of, of the hinterland, and the success story of the policy elsewhere. The overall performance of candidates was very good. So yeah, I think you have been enlightened and educated, and I believe that you may not make some of these mistakes as candidate or the best I may be doing other uh, for subjects so you can check in our playlist at uh, Chief Examiner's Report to find some of these uh, contents for yourself. Have a nice day and thank you for watching. Bye bye.